everyone, Nate with Growers House here, and today we have another new product that I actually discovered at a trade show and I was extremely interested in. Um, it's called the O2 Grow, um, and essentially that's O2 like oxygen. And this product I think is going to, at least in all my gardens, uh, replace air stones in the traditional way when you think about it, whether it's like long rectangular or cylindrical or uh, long air diffusers. And um, I believe that we're doing that just because we ran our own testing with a dissolved oxygen meter to see how, you know, like a pretty good air stone on the market with a really strong air pump would go against this new type of uh, way to oxygenate water, which, which is not an air stone at all. And due to the fact that it's so different, um, there are a lot of benefits that it brings about. So I want to go over it with you guys to show you a little bit about what makes this product so cool. So traditional bubblers and air stones are pretty inefficient at raising the dissolved oxygen level in water. Um, they actually, at the same time, raise the water temperature to get close to matching the surrounding air. And I mean, if you think about this, an air pump is pumping the air from your environment through your reservoir, which is then making the reservoir the same temperature as your room. So if you have your room running at, you know, closer to 80 degrees, and you want your reservoir between the optimal 65 to 72 degrees and you're constantly fighting a battle where you're actually oxygenating your water which by virtue of raising the temperature you're decreasing the amount of potential oxygen in the water so really that range of 65 to 72 is ideal the higher the temperature the less oxygen you can have in your water the lower the temperature the more oxygen you can have but you don't want to get so low like that the water is actually decreasing your plant's growth rates, which can happen when you go below 60 degrees. So that's why, um, you know, essentially a product like this can be introduced to your reservoir and you don't push any air through it, even though there are these cables here, um, no air is going through them. It's just very, very minute amount of energy, which doesn't convert into basically any heating of your reservoir. Now, I wanted to read this information directly from a study. Um, so a scientific study done on cucumbers showed that lower dissolved oxygen levels depressed water uptake through the plant stem. So another study also showed that water at near 100% saturation of oxygen leads to the most optimal water nutrient and oxygen uptake into the root zone. And since small air bubbles in water have a slightly negative charge, some scientists have proposed that micro bubbles, like the ones that are created, by the O2 Grow and not by air stones and nano bubbles can attract positively charged ions that are dissolved in the nutrient solution, thereby enhancing the nutritional value of the water for the plant as a sort of nutrient carrier. So in essence, this means the way that this electrolysis is creating these micro bubbles might actually make any nutrients that you have in your reservoir more potent at being absorbed into your plant without doing anything else which is crazy. And I mean, at the same time, when you think about it, low oxygen conditions in your water, um, bring about more friendly environments to pathogens and things that might attack stressed roots. So it's another reason why you want your water at as close to 100% saturation of oxygen as possible. So basically how this meter works, I mean, it's um, through electrolysis, it's just producing um, oxygen in the water. Essentially it takes that H2O and it splits it apart and O2 gets released in the nano bubbles and a small amount of hydrogen is released and evaporates off. But some of you might be scared of the hydrogen gas but don't worry it's not enough that it could be combustible or it'll harm you. It's literally a negligible amount and won't have any harm uh, to anyone, neither you or your plants. So these, uh, also if you're taking a look at it, use a fraction of the energy that most air stones do putting into the reservoir. So it might be more effective at oxygenating the water and more effective on your electricity bill depending on the size of reservoir you use and the type of air pumps you use. One thing that's really important to know with this is you can't really use it on DI water or deionized water. Water that has zero parts per million, this electrolysis doesn't really work. It actually works best on solutions that have a lot of conductivity in them. So that means put this in your nutrient reservoir with your nutrients in it. RO water, it'll still work in, but not as well. So the more parts per million you have in your water, the better this works. So 
um, effect effectively put it in with your with your nutrients in your reservoir. Don't worry about your nutrients mucking it up or getting it dirty. Um, they do get a little bit dirty over time, but you just use um, I think it's muriatic acid, which is the same thing as pool acid, and you just clean these by sticking them in it for about 30 seconds, about once a month, and that's how you keep these guys clean. And these emitters will last about 1,600 hours with normal use. And what they're recommending is you buy an emitter to be sized to the reservoir that you have. And then you run it for about two to three hours a day. And that'll bring your water up to close to 100% saturation of oxygen. And then if you do that as recommended, this guy should last for about 16 to 24 months. And they recommend not getting a unit that is going to be, you know, you'd run consistently for 24 hours a day because the amount of time that you're going to have for it to be available uh, or for its use, if you're running at 24 hours a day, will essentially be cut in one tenth. So instead of 16 to 24 months, you'd be at, you know, essentially a month and a half to two and a half months. So definitely get one that's sized to the correct reservoir. Don't get a smaller one and try and run at 24 hours a day because you might also not get up to that 100% saturation level. So now to go on to our results, which probably is the most important and intriguing part of the test that we did. So we got a large tank and then we ran the O2 Grow, which uh, against the, um, you know, an eight inch air disc with a commercial piston driven pump. And I'll actually start with the piston driven pump. So that one started out at essentially the dissolved oxygen went uh, essentially from 6.3 and over the course of three hours raised to 7.0. Now, the next day we did a study on the water and the, uh, it essentially started at 5.7, so it was a little bit lower the next day, probably due to a small temperature fluctuation. And then over the course of three hours, this guy raised it to 10. So the difference is uh, pretty substantial. And uh, in talking to the people from O2Grow, they said this is very consistent with the results that they've done and uh, the same kind of testing that they showed me at the trade show that I went to most recently. So, other than that, I mean, I do think this product is a game changer in terms of adding oxygen to your root zone so that your plants can more readily absorb nutrients and probably grow to their full potential. And I'm excited to see how this works out in our gardens and potentially yours. So if you have any questions, please email us or call us at Grower's House. Happy growing.